Good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I would like now to welcome you officially to the seventh annual meeting of the PRI, which takes town in uh, Cape Town. The meeting will go for two days, but essentially it went on and started already last week and with a lot of side events, with visits to mining companies and so on. And it will also extend to Thursday where there's a private equity company, uh, event. So it's a great opportunity to be here. It's a great opportunity to be here for the next two days. But as I said, you hopefully have expanded and uh, kind of even uh, adding uh, some of the side events. We have more than 400 delegates being here. It's a huge turnout. It's mainly signatories. We have 70 non-signatories yet, but I would hope that at the end of the day I can say you are leaving all as signatories. Um, and um, I think if I go back the events which I attended, Sydney, San Francisco, Rio, Paris, and now Cape Town, I would say if you go back to your company, they all sound like sexy places to go. But having been at these events, and that's what I'm expecting over the next two days as well, it's extremely hard work. You are so encouraged, you're so engaged, you're so interactive, and what you take out out of these two days in the common sessions, in the breakout sessions, but even more importantly also at the networking events or at the coffee breaks, I think this is the power of this room and I think hopefully you all will leave totally motivated and going back to your company and saying what difference can we really make? Because if you think about what power we have in this room, it's quite incredible. But we have to use it and we have to make it work. Um, when I think about South Africa, I mentioned it earlier, you will hear a lot, and you will have a number of presentations specifically on South African or African issues. South Africa has been such a leading company, country, in a lot of fields. Under the leadership of John Oliphant, and he will come on stage in a little while, um, the government pension fund, but also lead investors, plus academics like Mervyn King on integrated reporting. South Africa has been really the lead in a lot of global initiatives. And that shows kind of how important it is also for the PRI to be this global player. You always act in your local markets. But it's important, and that's what the PRI can offer, really to give you the global access. So therefore I invite you, and we have participants from Asia, Europe, uh, Latin America, all on this, uh, in this room to really exchange views, how it's done in your market. How can we use potentially new ideas to really bring them forward? I think that's the power which we have in this room. Um, last night we had obviously the cocktails. I hope you all enjoyed it at the waterfront. I think it was a great networking, and I would like to thank um, MSCI ECH Research, Bank of America, Mary Lynch, and yours SII to sponsor this event. Because without sponsors, such an event would be nearly impossible. And we have been quite lucky to have a number of sponsors who are sponsoring this event, and um, they're all listed outside at the banner but I just would like to raise them. Um, it's Alquidity Investment Management, BlackRock, Bloomberg, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Future Growth Asset Management, the Government Fund of South Africa, Harvard General Partners, Invest Asset Management, Itaú from Brazil, Legio um, Securities, MSCI Research, Old Mutual Insurance, Sunlip, Towers Watson, and USSRI.com. So thank you very much for the sponsors. I think it's quite important 
and without them, it would be very difficult to run such an event with so many people and with all the networking. There are various stands outside where you can get information. Please use them. I think it's a great invitation. Now I need to address a few housekeeping issues. Um, so first, which you hopefully have done already, so you switch off your mobile phones, also in the sessions. Fire alarm, you see the exit rows here. If there, it isn't planned that there is a fire alarm, so if there is a fire alarm, it's real. Um, in this case, you will be escorted outside to the lawn opposite of the place here. Um, then for tonight, um, the coach buses leave here at 6.30. If you haven't registered, please see the staff before 5.30 so that you can still be listed on the, the list. Otherwise, the coach buses leave here at 6.30. All refreshments will be saved in the West Ballroom exhibition area. The breakout sessions will take place on level two. So you have to go down there. Then we have a app, PRI events. So you see the code, it's case sensitive. And we have free Wi-Fi in this room here, or in the building. And you can log in as you see PRI in person, all in capital, and then Cape Town 2013. So these are the housekeeping. Uh, you will see, obviously, we all have this name tags. The staff has a yellow line here, so if you need any assistance, just look for somebody with a yellow tag. Um, and the council members and the board members have it in blue, so if you want to talk to one of the council members, whatever, you will see the color of them is blue underneath their name tag. With this, I would like to hand it over to John Oliphant. John Oliphant has been on the council now for a couple of years. He's a very active player. He has very actively promoted issues at the council, on the nomination committee, on the governance issues. He is a very active player. But also, I think he brought a lot of insights into the PRI from an African point of view. And he had been very instrumental to a lot of changes here in Africa. I think what the government pension fund is doing is outstanding. We will hear more about this, not only in South Africa, but also on the African continent. And I think, um, really, if I think about John, he has been so instrumental to a lot of changes here in this country but then also as a global player. So please welcome John. Wow, after that introduction, obviously the expectations are much higher. Um, I must say that it's quite exciting to see all of you here in Cape Town and um, as a council member, I'm quite excited to welcome you to Africa. It is said that when the Roman general Julius Caesar landed at Adrametus, which is now the modern site today of Sose in Tunisia, he stumbled and fell. It was seen as a bad omen, but, what, but with great presence of mind, Caesar pretended was deliberate and kissed the soil, exclaiming, Teneo te Africa. I hold you, Africa. Now it is our time to hold Africa. We too have stumbled, but either we may stay down, lamenting the bad omen, or we may show our presence of mind and realize that now is our opportunity. If, it, if we recognize that Africa represents a great potential, then we must ensure our investments reflect that. The core of responsible investment, and many have been written about responsible investment, the minister has reflected on the role of responsible investment in the global context. I must say that at the heart of responsible investing is the real question, whose future is our investment really nurturing? 
There are many answers to this question, but if we, if we, they do not refer to building and safeguarding our children's children's future, then they are incorrect in my opinion. And that is why we are here today, ladies and gentlemen. Responsible investing is no longer a peripheral dis a discussion. It is rather the core. It's the new way of doing business in the, new, in the 21st century. It's what I often call the new normal. If we don't in in incorporate it in what we do, then I think we're going to miss the boat. And the minister did reflect on the impact of climate change as a result of human activity and so on. The investment opportunities here are vast as the continent upon which we stand, but they are complex and inconsistent as the 54 varieties of countries and the multitude of strands that make up Africa as we know it today. And there are, as I have said, stumbling blocks which we need to overcome as Africans. But one of them is the persistent perception of is the issue of perception about Africa. Someone once said to me that the darkest thing about Africa has always been our ignorance of it. To counter this ignorance, it remains a big challenge. If you look at the 10 years ago, the Economics, economics Magazine had on its cover the hopeless continent. That has stuck in people's minds. Recently, they've changed their mind and they say Africa is rising. But we need to ensure as Africa, we've got the opportunity to communicate what Africa is about. We can't leave it to others to communicate the Africa story. So for us, we want to change that perception. And we believe that this conference here is an excellent start in allowing Africans to reflect on the opportunities that Africa bring to the world. As Africans, we believe that Africa has risen and we continue to ascend to new heights. We have an amazing self-belief and confidence in our future and in our continent. We have some, some of the outstanding leaders across government, business and civil society. Our optimism is not misguided, but is rooted on our, in, in our perception of development taking place in the continent and the rapid progress that has been recorded so far. Diverse reports estimate that Africa's annual economic growth will approximately be 6% between now and 2040. This is a feat unheard of when one refers to the continent, especially when you look at the current global economic environment. We believe that Africa presents excellent opportunities. So despite the progress and the number of multinational investors that believe in us and investing for the long-term growth in Africa, the perception gap still remains a factor. Work must still be done to bridge this gap. Undoubtedly, the gathering as the PRI in person here in Africa for the first time, we believe that we'll be able to overcome some of these perceptions. One of the contributors to this gap is a poverty and a growing inequality. If you look at the stark contrast, when you land on the world-class international airport uh, here in Cape Town, in the immediate surrounding, you can see the challenges that face the majority of our people. You come here, world-class conference center facilities at the waterfront. The question is, how do we bridge the gap between waterfront and Kailisha? How do we bridge the gap between Santin and Alexander? How do we bridge the gap in many of the societies in Africa and the inequalities that face most of our people in the continent. In addition, I think it is also it will be a serious remission to proceed with this conference without making reference to the tragic events in the West Gate Mall in Nairobi, Kenya. No words can fill the enormous void felt by families of those slain, and no amount of posturing or gesturing will serve to redress the event. What we can do and what we must do as responsible investors is to continue to ensure that the investment capital we represent to, to, it will be used to build a future where such desperate measures are no longer seen as an option. We must not look at the events in Nairobi and forget that governance and political stability has improved in the past, in the last decade. Nor can we ignore the fact that the levels of education, employment, and skills do vary across the continent. I realize that there, are, there will always be the skeptics among us who will dismiss that the changes we have seen on the continent are here. The risk facing business in African markets 
are no more significant than elsewhere in the world. However, the returns are among the highest in the world, and it is part of our mandate to effectively manage and to diminish the element of risk. I will leave you with two thoughts as how we have taken hold of Africa, one at a micro level and one at a macro level. First is the little known fact of the reversal of the brain drain. Many Africans are coming home and investing in their countries. This should send a powerful signal to the investors. The second, which the minister referred to, is the growing middle class and the growth of the continent's workforce. By 2020, Africa will have the largest workforce in the world. It remains to be seen how we use this in our investment capital to build a sustainable future to be enjoyed by all Africans and the world at large. And it will, ladies and gentlemen, I think it would not be fair for me to end my welcoming remarks without quoting one of the greatest in the African continent, the former president Nelson Mandela, and I quote, what counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived, it is what the difference we have made to the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life we lead, end quote. <coughs> Excuse me. We have the choice to make a difference to the lives of others. Let's ensure that the difference we make is significant. I would imagine that if Professor Philip Tobias, a renowned expert in the origin of humans, was alive today, he would have said to all of you, welcome home, homo sapiens. Welcome to the cradle of humankind. Welcome to Africa. I thank you.